Hello everyone. Welcome you all to Oral Medicine and Radiology Made Easy. Please like this video and subscribe to this channel. In this video, I have simplified pulp and periapical diseases in such a way that it will be useful for the BDS students during their oral medicine clinical postings. Before we proceed with the diseases of pulp and periapex, let's understand different parts of our teeth and gums. This part is a crown and the outer layer it has enamel and then dentin and below that is the pulp. Pulp extends into the root, adjacent to the pulp canal there is dentin and then a layer of cementum. The tooth is embedded in the alveolar bone socket with the help of the periodontal ligament fibers. Normal periapical tissues In a normal condition, there is no swelling and there are no symptoms noted by the patient. There is not any tenderness to palpation of the mucosa overlying the periapical region and tooth is not tender to percussion or pressure. So, in a normal condition, there is no swelling in the periapical region and there is no symptoms noted by the patient. Also, when you palpate the mucosa adjacent to the root apex that is vestibular palpation, there is no tenderness felt by the patient. And also, there is no tenderness to percussion as the periapical tissue is healthy. In the radiograph, the lamina dura is intact and periodontal ligament space is normal and has consistent width along the entire root which is similar to that of the adjacent teeth. So, this is a normal scenario. Coming to the etiology of pulp and periapical pathosis. So, pulp and periapical diseases can be caused due to dental caries or mechanical causes like iatrogenic operative procedures, trauma or chemical causes like acid etching and there are many other causes like anachoresis, enamel defects or periodontal infection. But the most common cause that we encounter is the dental caries. So, caries is the most common cause of pulpal and periapical pathology. Let us understand the pathway of pulp and periapical pathosis set out from caries. So, initially the caries involves the enamel and then extends into the dentin close to the pulp and then it involves the pulp. Once the pulp is infected, it extends to the root and then to the periapex and in the periapex it forms the initially it forms apical periodontitis and then periapical abscess which enlarges in size and causes vestibular expansion and then drains through the sinus opening. Some of the important concepts about pulp, why the pulpal infection is unique. The pain of the pulp is poorly localized that is patient would not be able to exactly point out at the tooth which is causing the pain because the pulp lacks proprioceptors and it is very difficult to associate and pinpoint the exact tooth. Unlike the periodontal ligament which has proprioceptors, pulp does not have the proprioceptors. So, the pain of the pulp is poorly localized. Next, pulp pain is not provoked by pressure on the tooth. The patient can chew in comfort unless there is a large open cavity allowing food to distort or stimulate the dentin that is pulp is enclosed within the hard chamber. So, any pressure on the tooth does not provoke pulpal pain until unless there is a large open cavity allowing the foot to distort or stimulate the dentin. The chief factor hampering the pulpal survivor is enclosure within the rigid walls of the pulp chamber. So, we need to understand that any small infection to the pulp will lead to the pulpal death. That is even if a small portion of the pulp is involved because of caries, 
the entire pulp gradually becomes necrotic because the pulp is within the rigid walls of the pulp chamber and there is limited aperture for the apical vessels. So, what happens is that during pulpitis there is inflammation and these vessels are readily compressed by the inflammatory edema and thrombos. The blood supply of the pulp is cut off and it dies. So, pulp is enclosed within the heart tissue chamber and the opening for the blood vessel at the apical region is very narrow. So, during pulpitis there is inflammation at this region. Hence, the blood supply to the pulp is cut off because of narrowing at the orifice and then the pulp dies. Coming to the classification of pulpal diseases. So, based on the symptoms and treatment, they are classified as focal reversible pulpitis or pulpal hyperemia. Then acute irreversible pulpitis. Then chronic irreversible pulpitis. Another form of it is hyperplastic pulpitis. So, the treatment for the focal reversible pulpitis which is the only reversible pulpitis is removing the exciting agent. For the acute irreversible pulpitis and chronic irreversible pulpitis it is root canal treatment. The first condition is focal reversible pulpitis. Early mild transient pulpitis localized chiefly to the pulpal ends of the irritated dentinal tubules that is here the caries is not at involve the pulp but it is very close to the pulp and the irritants from this decay causes transient pulpal inflammation. So, there is mild to moderate inflammatory condition of the pulp and it returns to normal upon removal of the stimuli. So, the pain because of focal reversible pulpitis, it is sharp and of short duration. It is stimulated by cold and sweet and it subsides soon after the stimulus is removed. So, we need to understand this important point that is the pain is of short duration and it subsides soon after the stimulus is removed. On clinical examination, you may find a deep carious lesion and the vitality test is positive at a lower level of current indicating lower pain threshold. So, this is the only reversible pulpitis, rest all forms of pulpitis are irreversible. So, this pulpitis has sharp and short duration of pain and subsides soon after the stimulus is removed. The next condition is acute irreversible pulpitis. So, focal reversible pulpitis if not treated will extending to pulp and as soon as the pulp is infected it causes acute irreversible pulpitis that is inflamed pulp no longer capable of healing and returning to normal. So, it is typically episodic in nature initially, but may progress into a constant intense pain or toothache. So, initially it has episodic nature and then it may turn into a constant intense pain. Pain is partly due to pressure on the irritated nerve endings from edema within the rigid pulp chamber that is pulp is within the rigid chamber of dentin and enamel. So, when the pulp is inflamed the pulp shows signs of inflammation and there is formation of edema. So, this edema within the rigid pulp chamber applies pressure on the irritated nerve endings and also the pain may be due to release of pain producing mediators from the damaged tissue and inflammatory cells. Clinical features, the patient may be in exquisite agony at the point of hysteria. Patient may have sharp continuous throbbing and diffuse type of pain and pain is of short duration that is less than one week, but the severity of pain is much much more than that of focal reversible pulpitis and the pain continues even after the removal of the cause 
This is the differentiating factor between focal reversible pulpitis and acute irreversible pulpitis. In focal reversible pulpitis, the pain subsides immediately after the removal of the cause, whereas here the pain continues after the removal of the cause. Once again, as it is a pulpal pain, it is difficult to localize. Change of posture may aggravate pain. Hence, patient may report that pain aggravates on lying down. Heat increases pain and cold decreases pain. Vitality test is again positive at a lower current indicating lower pain threshold. The next stage is chronic irreversible pulpitis. Here, the acute stage has subsided and the lesion has turned into a chronic condition. So, the patient may have mild pain which is intermittent and dull type. It is brought on by hot or cold stimuli occurring or sometimes the pain may occur spontaneously. The duration of the pain is of more than one month. Since it is a mild pain, patient may be able to bear the pain for a longer duration. Hence, the duration is usually more than one month and there will be previous history of severe symptoms of the stage acute irreversible pulpitis at times. Symptoms may be aggravated by heat or cold and pulp vitality response is either delayed or non-responsive since the pulp becomes non-vital at this stage. Another form of chronic pulpitis is hyperplastic pulpitis. It is usually seen in young people in a chronically inflamed pulp in a permanent tooth and it is usually asymptomatic. On clinical examination, you can see open pulp chamber with a proliferating pulp. Vitality test may be positive or usually it is negative and it is non-tender but bleeds easily as it contains granulation tissue. With this we finish the types of pulpal lesions that is focal reversible pulpitis, acute irreversible pulpitis, chronic irreversible pulpitis and hyperplastic pulpitis. The diseases of periapex will be discussed in the second part of this video. Thank you.